So everyone, welcome to the Intelligence Processing Unit Training Labs. My name is Zheng Huahe, and I'm an assistant research scientist at Texas A&M High Performance Research Computing, and uh, today's instructor for this training lab. Um, this IPU um, lab is divided into four sessions. The first lab um, is about the introduction to IPU. In this lab, we will introduce about our ACS project, GraphCore IPU architecture and uh, the IPU system on the uh, Tamil ACS platform. And the second lab is uh, <clears throat> about demo on ACS. I will demonstrate about how to run some models of different frameworks, including TensorFlow and PyTorch on ACES IPU system. Um, the third lab is about the uh, TensorFlow on IPU. We will learn how to convert a Keras uh, MNIST classification model to run on IPU. Um, the fourth lab is about PyTorch on IPU. We will learn how to convert a PyTorch fashion MNIST classification model to run on IPU. So this is the structure for today's uh, IPU lab. Um, let's get started. So the first lab, intro to GraphCore IPU. So um, the ACES uh, is short for Accelerating Computing for Emerging Sciences. Uh, ACES is an innovative advanced computa uh, computational prototype to be developed by Texas a &M University, partnering with uh, TAC and the UIUC. And this uh, ACES project is funded by NSF. For <clears throat> GraphCore um, IPU, IPU is so for intelligence processing unit. Um, the IPU um, implements massively parallel MIMD. It is so for multiple instruction, multiple data, and uh, it, it's uh, good for machine learning workloads. And the model and data are entirely coupled with the uh, largely locally distributed SRAM. And uh, you can uh, achieve a faster memory access compared to CPU and a GPU. And uh, this is a diagram about the Bow IPU processor. So Bow IPU processor is a, a wafer, a wafer structure. It's a, a 3D stacking technology. And also um, each IPU has uh, 1,472 uh, independent IPU core and uh, 8,832 independent program threads executing in parallel and also it has about 900 megabytes in processor memory for IPU. Um, an IPU core and uh, in processor memory uh, constitute IPU, constitute uh, IPU tile. You can see here, we have a lot of uh, IPU tiles and also some other IPU links is changed. <clears throat> so four IPUs, um, constitutes a so-called um, bow IPU uh, machine. And uh, on our ACES, um, it should look like this. Uh, it's a pod 16 system, meaning that we have uh, 16 IPUs. So for each like bow IPU machine, it has four IPUs. So one, two, three, four. So we have a uh, 16 IPUs. Uh, this, uh, and also they are linked. Um, this is called a pod 16 system. Uh, this is uh, the IPU system on our ACES. So um, next I want to talk about the GraphCore software stack. Um, it supports um, different machine learning applications, for example, natural uh, language processing, image classification, object detection, and uh, et cetera. And also they have uh, 
a, a healthy developer ecosystem, they include a lot of things like tutorials, code examples, and documentation, and such. Um, and also, it supports some uh, different uh, deep learning frameworks, such as TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, ONS, and uh, Paddle Paddle, and etc. Uh, they have a, a popular um, SDK we will be using uh, today uh, for today's workshop, uh, today's show course. In GraphCore, also developed a um, so called pop vision graph analyzer. You can um, enable some environment variable and then you will get a lot of report files. You can use this uh, graph, pop vision graph analyzer tool to visualize the, for example, the memory usage of your program. It will show you the memory usage throughout the lifetime of your program and you will be able to identify, for example, which operation or which layer of your deep, deep neural networks utilize the most memory. And then you can, based on, you can, you can optimize your program based on, based on this. So there are, um, this is about uh, uh, graph core software stack. And uh, we have a uh, partnered with uh, some other universities and uh, supercomputing centers to do some benchmarks on different GPUs and IPUs. You can hear we, we test on our GRIS cluster A100 ITX T4. And also we have some, uh, do some test on Lone Star 6. A100 and also, uh, I guess this is Habergator um, AI from University of uh, Florida, DJS A100. Um, we, we are trying to look at the benchmark, the performance of these uh, accelerators. So to ensure our um, experiments are uh, correct and valid, so we uh, run some experiments on Hypergator DJX A100, and then compare the results with the um, the published results from NVIDIA DJX A100. You can see we have a very close uh, uh, result. So, uh, so we think our experiments are uh, valid and correct. So, um, for example, here we can see some scaling behavior. Um, for example, if we look at the green bar, this is for Hypergator DGX A100. So we can see a uh, scaling behavior. And also for this uh, expense, V100, it also have a similar scaling behavior. Um, we can see that uh, the ITU, uh, which is the black bar and and you can see it uh, also has the similar scaling behavior for the IPU. Here we choose to use a pair of IPUs um, considering the low price of IPUs and also the low power consumption. So we use a pair of IPUs. We can see the uh, IP, uh, IPU have a better performance here. Um, and also, oh, forgot to mention that this is uh, the uh, experiment uh, with the PyTorch and with the mixed precision. And, and also we um, run some benchmarks with the TensorFlow, with the mixed precision, and we have a similar observation and conclusion. So um, I guess, um, okay, we continue going a little fast. Okay, let's, let me demo on uh, ACES um, to run some models of different frameworks of a TensorFlow and a PyTorch, so you know how to run a model on IPU on our Pod 16 system on ACES. 
the ACS project, uh, the mission of the ACS project is to offer an accelerator test bed for numerical simulations and AIML. It also aims to um, provide consulting technical guidance and training to researchers and uh, collaborate on computational and data enabled research. So, let me continue. So, this is uh, 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 about how to access, access um, ACES. So, via SH. If you are affiliated with the uh, test CNM and uh, you should have a uh, user net ID. And uh, if you are on campus, you can use SSH command to um, log on to our faster cluster. Today, well, we access uh, ACES through faster. So, um, so if you have your user net ID, you can, uh, you know, terminal, you can type this command. Oh, by the way, um, this presentation slides has been uploaded to our website. So you can download this uh, uh, presentation slides and uh, you can call, uh, copy and paste the command as well. So uh, let me show you how to find our website. So if you go to, if you search PMU HPRC, and uh, if you, uh, the first one, you click on the first link, you can get to our website. And then you, if you find the event and then click on show courses, you will be able to find today's um, ITU Tech Lab. If you click on the view details, um, there are some information about this uh, course overview and a course materials under course materials you will be able to download the presentation slides so you don't have to um we will run some commands but you you can you can copy and paste from this file oh uh, okay i'm sorry i closed it i think that's okay um okay so Let's uh, continue. <clears throat> so if you are um, affiliated with the test CNM and uh, you have a user net ID, um, and if you are off campus, you need to set up and uh, start VPN, so-called a virtual private network. Here's the link, and then use the SSH command. You will, go, you will need to go through two-factor authentication it has been able to for central authentication service, VPN and SSH. So um, if you're on Windows, uh, the recommended SSH program is mobile S term. Also you can try, uh, you can use the Putty SSH, Windows subsystem for Linux. If you are on Mac OS, you can uh, use the terminal application. Here, we also have a third option for you, and uh, you can use our web portal, uh, Faster Portal. It's a web platform for users to access our clusters. So, uh, for example, here, I want to here. Just to clear this one. So, if you click on this link, you can get to our open on demand portal. So uh, enter cluster tab, you can see a faster shell access. So it will ask you about the password. I will demo here. So I will type in my password. And then I choose the, for the dual two-factor authentication, I choose one. So now I'm uh, faster now. You can see um, some message here about the um, resources of uh, Tesla CNM high performance research computing and also some policy information and uh, your disk quotas. 
Um, so uh, now you can see I'm on faster logging node one. Uh, you can also, I'm on a Mac OS, so you can also uh, use the terminal. So can you see my terminal? Um, if you can see my terminal, uh, can you type one or yes in the chat? Okay, thank you. So uh, in the terminal, you can also okay, um, use the SSH command to um, access our cluster. So I will be using foster hprc dot tmu dot edu, and then it will ask for password. I will type my password. And then again, I need to do the dual um, NetID two-factor authentication. And I choose one to let it push to my phone number. Then choose one. I got a notification on my phone. I click approve. And here I'm, I'm on faster one now. So a different logging node, I guess. So, oh, uh, same logging node. Um, uh, faster should have four logging nodes now. And uh, you can check the batch prompt to see which logging node um, you land on. So for logging sessions that are idle for 16, 16 minutes will be closed automatically. Process run longer than 60 minutes on logging nodes will be killed automatically. Um, you are not allowed to use more than eight cores on the logging node. So um, because we have uh, other users and uh, we don't want to the um, their um, work to be um, interfered. So uh, we want everyone to be a good computation citizen. So. Uh, do not use the sudo command as well. So um, if you are affiliated with the test CNM, if you are a student or employee, you can try these as I demo. And then let me check the, okay, thank you message. And this is about the two-factor authentication. And uh, so you can choose uh, any option you prefer and uh, then logging. If uh, you are an access user, um, access is the show for advanced cyber infrastructure coordination ecosystem services and uh, support. Um, access is uh, a virtual collaboration founded by the NSF that facilitates free customized access to advanced digital resources, consulting, training, and mentorship. Um, you will need to get, uh, view the Get Started document to create an uh, access account. I guess uh, uh, many of you should have the uh, access account ready for this course. If not, you, um, I think you need to create an access account to access our, um, the IPU system on our cluster. And then here, um, after you have the access account, you will need to SSH via our jump host. So I will um, demo this one as well. Uh, so I just copy this command and open my terminal and we'll open another one. So I haven't changed my faster, uh, the username, you replace the faster username with your access account. Uh, let me check my, I didn't remember my faster username, so I will find it. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing now. I don't want to share my uh, access account. So 
I've will replace the faster username with the access access account name. Okay. Um, now you can see. Um, oh, uh, self sharing. So um, if you have a access account, uh, you should be able to log into our faster uh, system. So um, let me let me share again. So you just need to, you can copy and paste this command and replace the faster username with your account name, access account name. Um, so uh, this is the first hands-on session. Um, please try to access the ACES wire. We are uh, faster now. And uh, you can look at the, what a message where uh, is displayed when you log on. And, uh, if you have any questions or problems, please let us know. Um, for the presentation slides, again, you can download it from our web page, as I showed. It's uh, in our web page. So courses, and it's here. So you can download the presentation slides from here. Um, maybe I'll give um, maybe um, three minutes or three minutes to let you guys um, log on to our faster. So if you have any questions, you can send a question to the chat. Okay, uh, Lisa said for access users, you should have received an email with your faster username. Thank you. Okay, you can choose different ways to, um, to access our, um, ACES platform. Yeah, I have a question about uh, the duration mm -hmm. of the access for account. I get a car, uh, access to ACES uh, only for this training. Uh, I have access account. So mm -hmm. how long will that account last? Um. For this question, I'm not quite sure about the duration. Uh, I will ask uh, our system admin or our director about the duration of this uh, access account and then reply to you. If you can um, leave your email to me. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So that is for via SSH, and then this is for access users. Any questions? If you are um, faster now, like this, you have your uh, bash prompt, you have your uh, our faster system, can you um, uh, type one in the chat box so we know that you are good now. Okay. Okay. Good now to use a private private message, direct message. I, I know you are on faster now. Thank you. And also, okay. Mm. Okay. Um that's great. Um Oh, now we have our uh, graph four people, graph four ITU expert in our uh, Zoom meeting now. So, so welcome. So hello. let's continue. Uh, hello. Um, let's continue. So 
now we are on faster now. So the demo. So the demos, the tutorials can be found on our Tesla CNM HPRC Viki. And if you click on the link and uh, the tutorial covers a PyTorch or PopTorch. PopTorch is an extension of a PyTorch um, developed by GraphCore and then TensorFlow 1 and TensorFlow 2. So let's click on this link and uh, go through the step-by-step uh, the -step guide to uh, run some models on IPU. So I believe you guys uh, uh, can see a similar best prompt now. You are on a faster logging node. And uh, from there, we can access it to the popular one system, which is our, which is the IPU system on our uh, platform. So um, let me try, I guess I have another, I wanna use this one. So let me, uh, let's do it together because this is a practice along uh, short course. I want you guys to really um, type the commands and run the models with me so you can um, get something from these short courses. And also uh, in the last two labs, we will learn how to convert um, the code to IPU code. So uh, SSH popular one, and then now you will see something. Uh, now we are at the home directory. So uh, next we need to set up the popular SDK environment uh, for the IPU. So the command is a sort and uh, this directory and uh, this, is uh, this is script. Um, we have uh, a few different versions of popular and pop art on our system. Um, here, but I recommend you to use the 2.5. Um, we, um, I, test, I tested this version and it works well. Um, I have a colleague who tested another version 2.4 uh, to give him some errors. So for today, we are gonna use this uh, popular and pop art 2.5 so you can uh, copy and uh, paste these commands uh, in your terminal to to set up the popular SDK environment. So uh, okay, I guess I have enabled the popular SDK, so it gave me an error. Uh, a popular SDK has already been enabled. So. Uh, you guys may uh, can run this command. So um, I don't know around because I already enabled in my, when I uh, start the bash. So uh, you can run these and also the command to set up some environment variables for uh, cache directories. So if you uh, encountered any errors, please um, speak up or send the question to the chat and uh, we will try our best to help you. Any problems so far? Okay, let's continue. So first one, the PyTorch, we will set up the environment for PyTorch. Um, GraphCore actually um, used the PopTorch, which is the PyTorch extension. Uh, so here you can see we will in, uh, install the PopTorch. Um, here now you should uh, be on the local home directory. The, it, it is small, it's only like 300 gigabytes. Uh, you can store the large, your large files in local data username, or uh, we have a sim link from your home directory. You can use the same link as, as well. Um, the local, uh, local data directory has 3.5 terabyte available. So it's uh, bigger and uh, now that's uh, 
change out uh, change the directory to local data. So. And so now I'm at the local data directory. And then uh, next we create a virtual environment for this uh, pop torch test. So you can copy and paste this command to your terminal. I guess I have this uh, virtual environment uh, uh, created as well. So uh, please um, run the command. Um, let me check my virtual environment. Yes, I have this uh, to test virtual environment ready. So. Uh, if you um, you can run these commands. If you encounter any errors, please please let us know. And then you activate your uh, virtual environment, and this upgrade the PIP and also install the port torch. Um, we also have a few uh, different versions of port torch. I, I guess on our system. So. Here I recommend you to use the 2.5 as well. You can um, replace this uh, uh, with uh, with this wheel uh, directory wheel file. So and uh, install the pop pop torch. Okay, um, we had a error here. Um, Bennett, could you please tell me uh, your version of uh, Poplar and Pop Art? Did you use these two? Do I need to activate both or just the top one? Uh, you need to activate both. Uh -huh. So you didn't, I guess you didn't source this uh, Pop Art, right? Right, I only sourced the top line there. Oh, okay. Um, uh, you need to source the pop art as well. Right, Poplar is the SDK stack, and pop art is the runtime. Yeah, gotcha. Thank you, Richard. Um, so, and then after you uh, install the pop torch, you can get a clone of uh, Gra GraphCore tutorials. Um, you have a GitHub repo and uh, you can change your directory to a directory called MNIST and then install the required dependencies. Um, you can run the MNIST to pop torch uh, code. Do we have anyone who successfully run this? If you have a successfully run this, um, can you type one in the chat so we know someone uh it's good it's good maybe we can wait a few minutes here okay yue xin has uh, successfully run the um run the code okay um actually um you can use um if you have another terminal and uh, you SSH to Poplar, um, Poplar One, um, which is our IPU system, uh, you can use the GC dash monitor to uh, see your uh, process on IPU system. For example, here I have a, a terminal here. Uh, can you guys see my terminal here? So this terminal, okay. And uh, thank you. If you are on another terminal, for example, if you use a G, I guess I didn't have GC monitor. And you will be able to look at your, I can see uh, this user is, uh, um, is on ITU. So he's on ID one. So you can see we have 
by using this GC monitor, we can see all its uh, pod assisting system has 16 reconfigurable IPUs. Um, so this, uh, you can use these to monitor. Um, for example, if you run multiple IPUs, you can see uh, the different processes on IPUs. Okay, I will put down this one. Um, I want to ask again um, about this uh, Park Torch example. Uh, up to here, uh, do you have any questions? Have you successfully run the model? Uh, I want to ask Bennett. Uh, Bennett, uh, after you um, source these uh, pop art, um, do you still have uh, um, errors or problems running the code? I believe it's running now. Okay. Yes, you can use a watch uh, dash and one, one like every second. Uh, to watch the IPU, the processes, the IPU. You can use the the command suggested by Richard. And uh, you can see different. You see monitor. Okay. So you can, I guess it's too big. So you can see now we have three users uh, running on our, uh, okay, one user has finished the job and uh, then we have uh, using the IP ID 012. Yes, that's great. Oh. Okay, um, I guess we can um, move on for TensorFlow 1. Um, so after you run this uh, code, you can deactivate your um, pop torch test virtual environment. So you can just use the deactivate your terminal and then it will deactivate your virtual environment. And then we will uh, uh, create another virtual environment called a virtual environment TensorFlow 1. Uh, yes. Um, I think Richard should be, uh, Richard is correct. If uh, you enable, you source the popular and popular environment, you should have a GC monitor. Um, uh, Shivei, could you, uh, could you tell us if you source the popular and the popular environment? Oh, I see. I opened a new terminal and for, and do, didn't source it before. And after I source those two files, it works now. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. Good here. And then, okay, no process is on IQ now. Let's uh, continue. Let's... Oh, sorry. Why I click on edit? Um, and then we set up TensorFlow 1 for IPU. And uh, again, we want to uh, change it to the local data directory. And then we create a virtual environment called a v, uh, env underscore tf1. And then we activate the virtual environment. We install the TensorFlow uh, 1. And uh, here I uh, recommended a uh, version TensorFlow 1. Um, 
you can use this one. I didn't check on others, so this should work well. And then uh, you don't have to clone again the graph core tutorials. You just need to change the directories to uh, TensorFlow Amnest, and uh, you can run the Amnest file. So I guess we can see, we can wait a few minutes. See, we have any preferences here. If you encountered any error, um, please let us know. You can speak up or use the chat window to let us know. Did anyone successfully? I didn't see. Okay, now we have, I guess it's uh, maybe Hive. Uh, is running on IPU now, the Tensor for one. Yes. <clears throat> okay, we have another user. Okay, PSC is also using the IPU now. Um, does anyone have a, a problem or errors running these commands? Um, if you, um, if you encountered any errors, please, please let us know. Okay. Um, I guess I will continue and, uh, at about 2.30, we will have a five minutes break so everybody can drink some water and have a break. Um, so um, next is about tensor. We talk, uh, we run PyTorch or PulseTorch and a TensorFlow one on IPU, and then okay. Um, we have uh, run the run the Pop PulseTorch and a TensorFlow one model, and next we will run the TensorFlow two. So uh, here we will, again, we will be using our local data directory and we will create a virtual environment called VNTF2, TensorFlow2, and then we activate the virtual environment and then install the TensorFlow. So here, uh, I recommend you to use this uh, TensorFlow 2.5. Um, and then you can go to uh, change the directory um, to the Keras completed demos and then run the code. So does everyone finish the uh, TensorFlow one. If you have finished the TensorFlow one, could you please like type one in the in the chat? Okay, I saw um, people are writing uh, in the chat. Okay, great. Thank you. And then we can continue on TensorFlow 2. And then we will have a break. So we install the TensorFlow 2 and then we change it to the directory, complete the demos. Yes, I will. <clears throat> As everyone, I guess uh, Xiwei means uh, you have successfully run TensorFlow 1 and 2. Am I correct? 
Okay, great. If you have any problems running these uh, model, models, please let us know. Um, we will have a five minute break. Let's come back at 2.32. Okay, everyone, welcome back. Um, it's two, it, it is 2.35 now. Uh, can you see my screen? The title of this slide is called Demos. If you can see my slide, can you um, type yes in the chat? Okay, thank you. And then we have learned how to run um, different framework models on IPU system, on our it's just, uh, IPU system. So next is about how to convert your, for example, your existing TensorFlow or PyTorch code to, oh, I'm sorry, I want to, I want to turn on my, my camera. And you, uh, we want to know how to convert your existing TensorFlow or PyTorch code to, uh, to IPU code. So um, TensorFlow on IPU, maybe we have some uh, um, attendees here who do not, um, who, is, uh, um, uh, who is new to deep learning or uh, machine learning here. We want to briefly introduce about the AI machine learning and deep learning. And um, AI is so for artificial intelligence and uh, it is anything about man-made intelligence exhibited by machines. So it's a machine intelligence, um, not like human intelligence. Or, uh, machine learning is an approach to uh, achieve AI. So it's a, a subset of AI. And machine learning is uh, kind of like your program improves with data or experience without being explicitly programmed to do so. Um, Deep learning is one technique to implement machine learning uh, with uh, uh, deep neural networks like layers of neural networks similar to humans' neural system. So this is a basic introduction about relationship of uh, AI, machine learning, AI, ML, and DL. And uh, we have different types of machine learning algorithms. So the first one is called the supervised learning um, the model is trained with the label data. Um, for example, here, uh, here I mentioned regression. For example, you have some house marketing data. For example, you have uh, the square uh, living uh, area, square feet of living area, and you have the house price. So the house, house price is your label. and. Uh, like that, and you want to do some regression to predict your house price. And also classification problems. And uh, here, I, the second type of machine learning technique is uh, called unsupervised learning. It's, the model is trained with unlabeled data. So the, the data is without label or text. In a clustering, for example, you divide a group of data points into, uh, you, you divide uh, some data points into several groups. Um, they have no labels or tags and uh, association rule learning problems. And also we have a reinforcement learning. In, re in reinforcement learning, it's uh, about like agent in your environment to uh, get uh, the highest reward as possible. Um, it has no training data. The most widely used uh, uh, learning model is called a Markov decision process, and a robotics or business strategy planning is a uh, okay, could it be uh, reinforcement learning. So here I list uh, uh, a comparison between the traditional modeling, like numerical modeling, with machine learning. If you do numerical uh, modeling or simulation before, you know that you, uh, for example, you started with a governing equation for. For example, me, I, I, I went to equational motion and then that is my governing equation. And then I 
have the initial conditions and boundary conditions, and then I use some numerical methods to discretize my model, and then put all these into a computer, and then I can make predictions. This is different for machine learning. We use a supervised learning as an example. You have uh, some data and an excited output, and then you train the model uh, in the computer, and then you have a trained model. And then you have some new data, and then the you can predict the make predictions on the new data with the trained model. This is uh, uh, different from uh, um, different between traditional machine uh, numerical modeling and uh, machine learning. So this is a, a simple illustration about the deep learning. For example, we uh, deep learning model. Uh, for example, we have an image. You can see we have a cat in this image. And uh, the, the computer sees are the pixel numbers, right? So it won't catch, the computer won't see an image like, like us human, human do. So this is the pixel numbers and uh, even the color picture, it could be has three channels, R, R, RGB channel. And uh, we can, let it go through a deep learning model. For example, if you know about a deep learning neural network, you have a layer, uh, multiple layers of uh, multiple layers of neural networks, and then at the end, for example, you you got a four element of vectors. You have four different classes, and you can see uh, we have the highest uh, probability for a cat. So we our model predict that this is a cat. So this is kind of a, how deep learning works a simple, very simple illustration here. Um, and also for, uh, there are some tools that is help um, you to visualize uh, um, deep learning neural networks. For example, here, uh, if you, you can click on this link after this uh, short course, and then you can uh, write on different words. This is a, a different numbers. This is a, a MNIST classification um, model. And then you can, uh, for example, write a two, three, or four, and then uh, you can look at each layer, for example, a convolutional layer and how uh, and a pulling and a how, how the feature maps be, uh, gradually change and then make the last uh, output. You can look at the output at the in last layer as well. So uh, this is very um, visual. You can you can look at all these. And also uh, there's another uh, convolutional neural network is planar. And uh, um, I don't want to talk too much about it. And uh, you can see each layer, for example, convolutional layer and uh, how it processes to the next layer and uh, the mass pulling and uh, how it will process the input and uh, get the output. So um, you can play with these uh, uh, two tools after the this lab. So here, the machine learning workflow with Keras, uh, we have several steps. The first step, we prepare the train, training data and prepare the train data. And, uh, and also we need to split the, our data set into training data set and testing data set. And then we can define model. Uh, we can use the Kara sequential model for linear stack of layers, or you can build a, you can also build a complex new, neural network as well. Um, here we have uh, the thir uh, third step we, that it's a training configuration. You need to specify the optimizer, loss function, and uh, the matrix, a list of metrics. And then train the model. So we in Keras, we call the feed function. You can specify how many epochs you want to run and the batch size um, and the measurement uh, metrics need to be evaluated. So this is a typical workflow for with Keras. And uh, here, um, we will be working with the Keras MNIST uh, classification model. And uh, to convert a Keras um, classification model to be a 
10Q model. So uh, we need to import the TensorFlow IP module. Um, you can add the following statement to the beginning of the script. Uh, let me first um, let you um, So um, I want you to clone some, oh, maybe I should come here, hands-on session uh, two, although we haven't started the session yet. Um, let me go to my, go back to my uh, terminal and uh, you can git clone uh, a GitHub rampo. I think uh, the GitHub repo is actually um, exists on our course website. So you can git clone this uh, repo or you can go back to our short course webpage, MOHPRC again, and then you can go to events and then you can see a short courses if you go to this technology lab uh, for IPUs, uh, ACs, and then you view details, you can find this uh, IPU training GitHub repo. So it's the same link. And then you can copy, and where's my terminal? Terminal is here. You can do git clone. So you will have uh, this, uh, uh, you will have this repo cloned because I already cloned it. So you can see my IPU training GitHub repo. And if you come to here, um, I want to ask, do you have a, a problem uh, Git cloning this uh, repo? If you have uh, cloned this repo to your local data directory, could you please type a yes in the chat window? So, okay, let me see the chat window. Okay, great, great. I saw users are, okay. Um, now we can change the directory to IPU training. And then if you use the list command, we can see uh, uh, a Keras directory. You can change to Keras and then we have some files here. Um, the first one is called Amnesty IPU to do. So uh, I want you to uh, open this file. I, I, I like to use Vim editor. If you want to use the other editor, um, you have your uh, favorite test editor. You can use your own. Uh, I use the uh, Vim. So you can see our file here. And uh, we have some uh, to do. Like to do step one, import the TensorFlow IPU module, write your code below. So let's go back to the slide. And I want to go back to my first slide for this module. So first step, import the TensorFlow IPU module. So you can, you can type this uh, import statement to the, to the script. For example, here, you can write down the write down um, the the uh, the code. Um, of course, you can copy and paste, but I recommend you to type it. But uh, considering the time limit for this course, I think maybe we can uh, copy and paste. So, but uh, it's better if you can type it by yourself, and you will. Uh, remember these uh, uh, codes and uh, more, much better. So do this. So I'll use enter. So you can see I have uh, uh, import the TensorFlow IPU module, and it's from TensorFlow.python import IPU. This is the first step. You will you will need to have the IPU module.
The next one, the popular software um, requires the size of the data set uh, to be divisible by the batch size. So, um, so uh, we have to write, uh, we, we, we need to write a, a function, for example, called a make divisible. And you have a number, you have a divisor. For example, this is the length of the data set. This is your batch size. You want to find a number um, that is uh, divisible by your batch size. So this is the largest number that is less than this number, but divisible by this uh, divisor. And uh, so we write this utility function and uh, we use this utility function to adjust the um, data set length. For example, we uh, load the data and then we find the length of the training data. And then we, we make use of this utility function to find the, the, the training data length that is divisible by the batch size. Similarly, we, um, uh, we do on the test data set as well. We make use of this utility function. Um, so if you can, I know um, due to the time limit, so we can, maybe you can just uh, copy and paste the code to the, um, we don't want to, uh, use too much time. So, uh, you can see a uh, to do step two, write a utility function which compute the largest number, no larger than a given number, and uh, which is divisible by a given divisor. So, um, just a copy and a paste here. So, now we have this uh, step two completed. So we have a utility function that can help us to um, to adjust the data set data set length. Step three, we will need to use this uh, created a utility function to adjust the data set length to be divisible by the batch size. So let's uh, go back to the slides. And we can copy the code. So this uh, training data set and a testing data set, the length, their length has been adjusted using the uh, function. So um, anyone have any questions so far? Okay, um, then let's continue. So now we have the data set prepared and uh, also we have adjusted the data length. Um, Next, we need to create the IPU configuration. Um, we use the IPU.config and then IPU config. So, um, and then from here, we can select IPUs. In here, we only select one IPU. So you can do, um, uh, for today's demo, we just use uh, one IPU. If you are interested in doing more IPUs, uh, you can uh, look at this uh, full list of configuration options. Um, there, are, there are a lot of uh, other options here. Uh, let's go to this uh, option web page. This is from a graph core documentation. And you can see um, we can create a TensorFlow device with one IPU, uh, you can pass a list to these uh, auto-select IPUs. And uh, for and uh, this, uh, we have two numbers in the list. And uh, 
it will create a two TensorFlow devices with a two IPUs per device. Also, you can do either a list for, for example, one and two. This will also create a two TensorFlow devices with one IPU in the first device and a two IPU in the second device. So you can, you can, um, um, after this uh, um, short, short course, you can uh, play with uh, these uh, different uh, configuration options. And uh, we, uh, we do not, uh, for this uh, lab, we only use one. So, and then we can configure IPU systems. So this is how you um, do the uh, IPU configuration. So ideal, Copy and paste. So uh, to do step four, create an IPU session configuration. So copy and paste. So um, then now we are at a step three and we need to uh, go to step four. We will set, uh, specify IPU strategy. Um, Actually, this IPU strategy is a subclass of TensorFlow distributed strategy. If uh, you are familiar with the TensorFlow distributed strategy, it's the uh, API to distribute the training and uh, inference on uh, multiple devices. So here, uh, IPU strategy is a subclass of it. So uh, we also need to specify uh, this strategy here. So create ITU strategy. That one, two, three, four, five. Hopefully they will run it on the IPU and the step five, I guess is the last step. We need to wrap the model because we create an instance of ITU strategy called a strategy here, and we will need to create a scope, strategy.scope contest manager and uh, move the model code inside it. So the model and will be running on the IPU. So um, uh, let's, I think it's uh, here. To do step three, wrap the model with the IPU strategy scope. So uh, I guess we will need to use read. Hello, Alex, are you there? Richard, are you there? Yes, I'm here. So yeah, we, we need are. to use V, the strategy.scope, and then wrap the model, right? Correct, it should be inside the scope. Yeah, yeah, and then we need to... Uh, So I wrap all these into the strategy scope. And then we call the feed function to train the model. And we pass in the training uh, data and label, and we specify our epoch and batch size. And also we evaluate the model on the testing data set. So after we finish all these, um, we have convert the, uh, a TensorFlow Keras model into IPU. So uh, how many steps we use? We use the steps. Uh, we have down six steps. So let's uh, save this file and then run the, run the, run the code. 
but we need to activate our um our virtual environment. So um what is our virtual environment name? Uh I guess it's uh in the demo we create a virtual environment called a virtual and underscore tf2, right? So I will need you to uh activate this uh, virtual environment as, uh, again. So if you have deactivated the source, um, where is it? Local data, virtual and tensor two. So now you can see we have the virtual uh, environment for TensorFlow 2 has been activated. And also, I guess we have the, the file, this one has been, um, has been, uh, we have a, we have put the, write the code in this uh, file. So let's run this, uh, I will, let's see if it works. IPU to do so it's running. I see several users on the IPU system as well. Uh, if you have any questions or errors, please let us know. And uh, that is a step by step guide. So uh, now you you know how to convert uh, convert a Terra uh, classification model to an IPU model and uh, let it run on the IPU. Any questions so far? So let's go back to the, and also if you have any um, problems, I also make a, um, it's called it, what is its name? The file. I also make a, a solution file. You can follow the steps in the solution and, uh, and to, 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 to run the code again. Um, so don't worry about it. And uh, amnest IPU dash solution .py. This is the solution file, and this is our uh, kind of a practice file. Uh, you can always practice on this to do file, so um, so you know how to convert. Um, okay, we have another user successfully running on our IPU. Okay, that's great. And then this is about how to do the uh, hands-on session. It's uh, it's actually what we just did. So <clears throat> we source activated the um, TensorFlow two virtual environment, and we we complete the to dos in the in this file. And then we run the run it in the virtual and TensorFlow two virtual environment. So um, so we have a successfully. Uh, does anyone have a error or problem to run this to follow this? You can after um, after the uh, after this short course, you can still follow these uh, steps to work on the work on the work on this code. File. It's called an MNIST IPU to do. Um, I guess no questions. If you have any questions, you can type it in the chat so uh, we can help you there. Okay. I hope everybody is uh, is following along. Oh, I have a I still another user is using my IPU. That's great. So um, hopefully you can uh, practice um, 
following these steps and uh, you are getting more and more familiar to con convert a Keras code to uh, IPU code. And then this will be our last lab, lab four, PyTorch on IPU. So let's continue. <clears throat> So um, first of all, let's, uh, let me introduce the PopTorch. PopTorch is the set of extensions for PyTorch uh, released by GraphCore. And uh, so um, it will enable your existing PyTorch models to run on IPU with the uh, uh, minimal change. So you don't have to change a lot um, to run your PyTorch code on I IPU. You just need to do uh, a few changes. Um, as Richard said, the pop art is the runtime, and uh, pop torch will use the pop art to parallelize, parallelize the model over um, a few IPUs, and uh, so enable you to data parallelize the model over more IPUs. So, uh, although PyTorch is an extension of a PyTorch. But still, it's a separate. So we have to import the uh, pop torch um, as well. So uh, in your, for example, in your PyTorch model, you want to import a pop pop torch as well. Um, I will. I think this one. I will. In this uh, um, lab, I will first go through the every step and then. We will go to the files together. And then uh, for the data loader, for example, for this lab, we will use the uh, session amnest data set. And then we know that uh, Torch has a data loader. And uh, Pop Torch also has a data loader that is an expansion of uh, Torch Utils data, data loader. Um, it's specialized. For to use the underlying pop art uh, to handle the, the batching of the data, your data. So uh, we will not use the torch utils the data dot uh, data loader, um, but use the pop torch dot data loader. So and also for the for example here we do the model we uh, created the a model layer by layer, a convolutional polling and a convolution and norm, like layer by layer. And uh, but in the forward function, we also need to for training. We also need to return the do the loss computation. Uh, this is the difference. So this is just uh, uh, want to ensure that the the computation, the loss of computation, on the IPU as well. So this is a one of the different. And then we will prepare training for IPUs. Here's a compilation and the execution on IPU uh, are controlled using the pop torch options. Um, the options um, can be used by the pop torch wrappers. For example, we just mentioned the data loader. Uh, training model uh, wrapper or, and also inference model. Uh, PopTorch data inference model can also use the options as well. So first we create an instance of the PopTorch options. And uh, here we use the PopTorch dot data loader. And then we have the options instance and the train data set, batch size, shuffle, or number of workers. So these are parameters. So we can create the training data set, data loader. <clears throat> okay, and then we need to specify the optimizer. Um, PopTorch also, uh, it has the optim. Um, it also inherits the PyTorch, uh, some of the um, uh, PyTorch optimization algorithm, for example, SGD, Atom, and other. Uh, optimi optimization algorithm as well. So here we use the SGD, and then we uh, 
discussing the model parameters, so the learning rate, and the momentum. So for here, you can see, uh, as we said, we can use the PopTorch um, training model wrapper. So we we pass in the options, right? So for here, we have the options, and we use it in the training model wrapper. And also we uh, pass in the optimizer. Uh, here we run 30 epochs, and uh, uh, this um, uh, code detaches your uh, pop torch model from the ITU device. So um, when when the ITU device was uh, detached, so other, for example, uh, inference can also use the same ITU as well. So this is um, if you want to do that, you can detach from device. And then this is a save, save the model. And then we do model eval, and uh, we use the in, uh, pop torch inference model wrapper. And now we pass in model and uh, options, no optimizer. So we know that it's uh, not for training, just for inference. Um, and here we also create a test data loader use a pop torch data loader. Uh, we specify the options, test data set, set size, and number of workers. And then um, after the inference, we also detach the model from the device as well. And that at the end, we print the accuracy. So um, this is the whole um, uh, process to convert a PyTorch model to uh, Pop torch uh, model to run on ITU. So this is the hands-on session three. Uh, I guess you you are on popular one, uh, on local data, and uh, for here you need to activate the pop pop torch underscore test virtual environment you created in the demo. In the demo. Uh, when we do the demo, uh, we have created this virtual environment, so you can just uh, activate it again. And then I believe you have a clone of my GitHub repo, and uh, you can change the directory to the PyTorch directory. So you will be able to find a file called session amnest PyTorch IPU to do. Um, and then you can run it in the, oh, I think we also, in the demo, we don't have the scikit-learn, so you also need to uh, install the scikit-learn in the virtual environment as well. So you 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 will be able to run the the fashion amnest PyTorch IPU to do file. Um, so here, um, I guess we can do it together. Maybe let let me let. Okay, we have uh, plenty of time, I guess. Um, if you can, if you are, um, now we need to deactivate the uh, virtual environment for TensorFlow, uh, for TensorFlow. So I will use deactivate and I will change it to the parent directory. I will have the PyTorch. So if you, oh, um, this is a not, uh, this is an old one for me, I guess. Um, I will go back to, if you, where did I down, uh, clone? Maybe the new folder? Oh yes, uh, I get it cloned to the, to another directory. So I'm sorry, and uh, it's a little bit confusing. And uh, so if you uh, change the directory to IQ-training, uh, uh, you will be able to find two directories. The one is Keras, the other is PyTorch. Now we are on PyTorch, so let's do change the directory to PyTorch. So uh, again, we also have uh, two files, Python files. One is the uh, session amnes PyTorch IPU to do. So this is a file for you to practice the to practice the, the uh, how to convert a PyTorch code to IPU. 
So, uh, and also here you can see a solution file. If you encountered any problems, you can open this solution file um, and to, uh, to see where uh, you go wrong. So if I look at the session and the to do, uh, <clears throat> so, um, so you can uh, view this file now. I, uh, similarly, I have some to do steps. For example, here to do step one, import the pop torch package and uh, write your code below import, I said, uh, fix me. So uh, you need to replace this uh, fix me with uh, the correct module, for example, pop torch. And then if we scroll down, so this uh, is about the uh, dash M and is data set classes and build the model. Similarly, and here to do step two, you need to add the loss computation in the forward function. So uh, I said uh, return fix me, you need to uh, fix the, um, the code here. And then we create a model and then we train here. Uh, we need to set up the pop torch option step three, and uh, you need to uh, modify the code options, uh, options, and then fix me, you need to replace this, fix me with the, the correct code. Actually, we have the code on the, on the slide. Um, if you want to um, carefully look at the, the code on the slide, that's good. And uh, you can practice like, uh, more than several times, you will be more familiar with these uh, steps. And also, PopTouch data loader. Uh, we create a train data loader. So, um, step four is our step four. So, we create a train data loader with the PopTouch data loader. You need to replace this uh, fix me as well. And then, uh, step five, set up the optimizer with the pop torch daughter optim. Uh, you can use the SGD or Atom, other optimization. Um, um, that a pop torch option uh, optimum has. Uh, so step six is to use the pop torch training model wrapper for the pop torch model. Um, it here I tell you it takes model options and optimizer. So um, rewrite the code and uh, and uh, re uh, replace the fix me. Uh, I think this is the step six, step seven. We um, you 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 can practice to detach the model from device to use the CMIQ for training and inference as well. So uh, this is the model instance, pop, pop torch underscore um, model and a dot, you can use detach from de device and then save the model. And then we can evaluate the model as well. And uh, um, here we use the pop torch inference model wrapper for the pop torch model inference. So here it only, uh, it takes the model and the options, not the optimizer. So uh, step nine, uh, we have more steps in the, in the PyTorch conversion. So to, to, to IPU code, so. <laughs> uh, step nine, create a test loader with the pop torch options and a test loader is similar to the train data loader. So uh, do this and then detach the device from your, detach the uh, pop, tor pop torch inference model from the device again. And then at the end, we uh, print out the uh, accuracy. So um, there are about 10 steps and uh, I will give you like uh, maybe 10 or 15 minutes that you can, um, no rush and uh, we have, uh, 40 minutes by now. So 
I, I guess you can um, you can slowly do these and it gets you more and more familiar with the, the conversion of PyTorch code to PopTorch. And then you can, after you finish this, you can see the code and uh, run on our IPUs. Okay, um, let's start the hands-on session for this one and you can, um, you can work on this file. Now, if you have any questions, please, uh, speak up or write your questions in the chat. We will, we will be here to help you. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can let us know. Thank you, Bennett. Oh, um, before you leave, uh, Bennett, uh, I want to show the last slide. Um, we have a, a help a help desk email, help at hprc.tmu.edu. If you have any um, questions or errors when you um, um, when you we will run the commands from this training lab, so you can send us the email, um, so we can continue to help you. Help you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So uh, I will give you about like ten minutes to modify the the code and uh, okay, I think very fast. I uh, think maybe it's CV is running on our IPU. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> So after these training labs, you should be able to um, convert some, some simple TensorFlow code and uh, PyTorch code to um, to run on IPU. So um, hopefully this can help you. And uh, and uh, you, you guys can use our IPU system uh, if you. If you are if you are down and are uh, successfully running the modified file on our IQ system, you can um, type um, maybe down or success in the chat and then um, to let us know. Thank you. Um, if you have a question, you can um, speak up. We still have some time. Um, uh, if you have uh, uh, successfully uh, modified the code and uh, you are also free to go. Um, that's uh, today's IPU training labs. 